good day. Welcome back to the Flying Doctor channel. Today I am in Mazatlan, Mexico in the state of Sinaloa. And I'm going to be trying out a new border crossing hack. So, if you're looking to try and get into San Diego County, or leave San Diego County for that matter, and head to Mexico in a very quick manner using airplanes, sit back, relax, get ready for a new and interesting flight review. arrived into Mazatlan aboard an Aeromexico 737 MAX flight and was interested to see how the Mazatlan airport compared to Mexico City's. The airport has a different layout than what I'm used to. Immediately after security, passengers enter the primary mall area where a bulk of the food, retail, and lounge offerings are. As I was on a bit of a time crunch, I didn't do much time walking around, which turned out to be smart on my part. With respect to the size of the airport, a relatively long walk is required to reach the gates. Bear in mind that there are no moving walkways or golf carts shuttling passengers from the main mall area to the gates. So, don't wait around until the last minute to leave a lounge or your food table before making your way to the gate. At less than one years old, X-Ray Alpha Victor Uniform Echo is an A321neo that will be taking me up to Tijuana today. The scheduled flight time was about two and a half hours and would cover around 1500 kilometers. After that new bird made its glorious entrance and I got to hear the whistle of the engines hum down, I decided to pack up some items before heading downstairs to the gate. Well, notice my apprehension to continue walking down the stairs after turning the corner. Having found the courage to enter the mob of passengers, I came to realize that the Aeromexico 737 MAX I had arrived on was boarding at the same time and at the gate opposite that my flight with Valeris was scheduled for. Certainly one of the more hectic boarding areas I've been in. Considering both flights were boarding at the same time and crowded, unfamiliar environments can cause anxiety in some people, it may have been helpful to have one airline utilize a jet bridge that would divide the passenger load onto two floors. One thing I've noticed when traveling in the US is that generally, people either don't notice or, probably more likely, completely disregard their boarding zone number. Turns out this is also prevalent in Mexico as it seemed many passengers were already on board prior to me entering the aircraft even though I was in boarding zone 2. This Volaris A321neo is configured with 239 Recaro SL3510 slimline seats with most rows supporting 28.5 inches of pitch. Having reached my row, I signaled to the two passengers in the aisle and middle seat that I had the window seat. As I struggled to maneuver my backpack and body around the person still seated in the middle seat, I became confused and a bit irritated. I thought to myself, how hard is it to get up out of your seat and let me comfortably sit down? The answer to that question became abundantly clear very, very soon. When providing the standard knee to seat back hand measurement, Valaris made the top of my list for least amount of legroom. Turns out I didn't have the microphone plugged in. I think what I was trying to say is how cramped I was. As I've mentioned in other videos, I am 6 feet 4 inches. 
it was at this time I genuinely began to question my decision to zigzag across North America in a single day. For context, I started the day out in Baltimore, Maryland, had a stopover in Minneapolis, and then Mexico City before reaching Mazatlan. The important thing is that I made it on board my fourth flight of the day and simply had to look out the window and enjoy the golden hour views outside. That being said, enjoy the startup of the Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan engine and the takeoff out of Mazatlan. Especially when your knee is shoved into the seat back in front of you because you're too tall. Regardless, it is about the experience and I'm maintaining a positive attitude. I'm just going to grab, grab some water from the FAs because I do think I'm a little bit dehydrated. Um, we'll see how much that costs actually because I don't think they'll provide that for free. But the sun is setting so the sky outside is pretty. It's a little hazy or foggy, smoggy out today. Not the best conditions for sightseeing, but seeing that A321neo engine glisten in the sunshine is definitely a nice sight. As I anticipated, Valaris operates a buy on board system which means food and drinks are not included in the price of your ticket. They offer a selection of snacks and beverages through their In the Clouds menu. Of importance, Valaris prefers credit cards as they do not provide change for cash purchases. Give you some more updates when we get on the ground. But in the meantime, let me give you a bit of information on this border hack that I mentioned earlier in the video. The Tijuana Airport is situated immediately adjacent to the border in San Diego County. Just under 10 years ago, a pedestrian bridge was constructed that allows passengers to cross the border between Mexico and the United States when flying into or out of the Tijuana Airport. The bridge itself is 390 feet long and has enabled millions of passengers who cross the border as part of their travel to avoid unforeseen delays at the congested San Ysidro and Otay Mesa ports of entry. <laughs> Even with the various aromas in the cabin, the pollutants in the air were minimal. 
the cabin temperature was consistent, and the humidity level measured was higher than expected, likely because of how tightly packed passengers were on board. Safely on the ground, my journey was almost over. Did you see the line of cars waiting to cross the border? From what I could see out the window, the line was more than three miles long. Nervous that my walk across the border might land me in a line of people just as long, I hurried through the terminal, repeating in my head, follow the cross-border express sign. 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 I had read many warnings to pay close attention to these signs and make sure not to leave the baggage claim area or else you would have to resort to actually sitting in that line I saw out the plane. Okay, looks promising. I ended up turning the camera off for concern of recording something I wasn't supposed to. Right after turning that last corner though, you're faced with what looks like any other subway or metro station entrance. I had purchased the TJX pass when booking my flight with Valaris, so I was able to simply scan my electronic boarding pass which granted me entrance. You take a couple of escalators up, cross a bridge over the border, descend on some more escalators, and you're knocking at the front door of the United States. After waiting in line for a bit and talking with CBP, I was back in the US. All in all, the process took about 24 minutes to go from standing up on the airplane and getting through customs. So let's sum up today's flight review. Having crossed the US southern border a few times before via car and traveled on US domestic low cost carriers, I was a blank slate when it came to expectations for the Tijuana Cross Border Express or CBX as well as the Mexican low cost carrier Valeris. All that I knew before today's journey was that I needed to make sure to follow the signs once off the plane and I could probably expect tight legroom. Having survived the flight, I was able to disembark the aircraft, make it to CBX, and pass through customs in less time than it took to actually board the aircraft. If you stuck around this long, one remaining question you may have is why would anyone fly into or out of Tijuana as opposed to San Diego, LAX, or one of the other multiple airports across Southern California? My journey today was simply about the experience, but I'm well aware that many people don't share my passion for sitting on an airplane for any longer than they need to. Here's the practical reason why some may fly out of Tijuana. If you have a vacation in Mexico somewhere, for example Cabo San Lucas, Mexico City, or Cancun, you can often find business class tickets out of Tijuana for the same cost or less than economy tickets when departing from the states. To me, that's reason enough to drive an extra 30 minutes to the CBX and depart from Tijuana as opposed to San Diego. Let me know your thoughts on the process and whether or not you would try the CBX in the future. As always, thanks for watching. See ya.